I am finally the owner of a pink princess philodendron plant. I got a pretty good deal on this plant for its size, especially since they are becoming more common now. But you might be wondering why I have it out in my garage on a plastic sheet and not on display in my home. And that is because right now it's going through something called gutation. If you've ever noticed little droplets of water forming on the tips or edges of your plant leaves, that is gutation. And it is different from dew. Dew will typically form on the top and bottom surfaces of the leaves, while gutation happens specifically at the tips and edges of the leaves. Many plants do this, but it is common in house plants like philodendrons, ZZ plants, alocasias, monsteras, and orchids. I haven't had this plant for very long, but the day after I got the plant, I rinsed it off in case there might be any pests on it, and then I watered it since the top of the soil was really dry. I quarantined it from the rest of my house plants in another room for a few days, and honestly, I kind of forgot about the plant during this time. And when I went to go check on it, I saw a droplet on a leaf. So I went to go get a tissue to wipe it off, but by the time I came back, it had fallen to the ground and it was sticky because it's essentially a sap. And then I noticed it on a few other leaves. This happens because plants absorb water and nutrients from the soil through their roots, and when there is more moisture in the soil than the plant can use, the plant needs another way to release that excess water pressure. And this is different from transpiration. Transpiration is the evaporation of water vapor through stomata, and gutation is the exudation of liquid water from specialized structures called hydathodes. In a way, it's kind of like the plant is sweating out excess moisture. But don't worry, this process is not harmful to your plant. In fact, it's good because it is doing what it needs to do to thrive by getting rid of that excess moisture. However, if it happens often or it doesn't stop after a few days, that might be a cause for concern and might mean some intervention needs to be taken. This can happen when a plant is overwatered or if the air is too humid, if the soil doesn't drain well, or if the plant has root rot. So it's important to check the roots to see if they look healthy or not. You can tell it's root rot if the roots are really dark and mushy and has a bit of an odor, but the roots on my plant here actually look pretty good. The roots are nice and firm and aren't super dark. But if you do see root rot, I suggest cutting off as much as you can if there are still some healthy roots, or if you see some nodes on your plant, you can make a cutting with a node and propagate it in some water, and when you pot it up, give it well-draining soil in a container with drainage holes, and make sure you don't overwater it in the future. I'm a little surprised that my plant is doing this because the top of the soil was dry when I got it and I didn't even rinse it off or give it water until the next day. And I dried the leaves thoroughly after rinsing it off, but perhaps the plant was watered shortly before I got it, but for some reason, just the very top dried out. But maybe further down into the plant pot, the soil was hanging on to some water. But if you take a closer look, you can actually see here that it's not your typical potting soil. It looks kind of fibrous. And I believe this is likely cocoa husk, which is something a lot of people add to their philodendron potting mixes, which is supposed to be good for drainage. So with so much of it here on the top, maybe that's why it dried out so quickly, but left the rest of the potting mix moist. And then I came along and watered it. And there is a yellow leaf down there at the bottom in the middle. So I think that probably is what happened, but I'm glad I don't see any root rot. I had initially put a plastic bag over one leaf that was dripping a lot of sap while I had it inside the house, but I think that may have made it worse because it likely trapped more humidity in. But in the moment of not wanting sap all over the place, putting the bag over that leaf to catch the sap was my solution. But you can see how much sap came off of that leaf. This was after about 24 hours. And philodendrons are toxic to cats, and therefore the sap would also be toxic. And for humans, if touched, it can cause dermatitis. So you can see why I wouldn't want this in my house while my plant is going through this process, especially with having a cat around, because I just don't have a large enough space to place this plant where something can catch the sap that falls down, because the plant is so large that the leaves would still be over any shelf I could put it on. So this plant is in the garage on this plastic sheet to have a good cry and let it all out. I have some other philodendrons and even some that I got as cuttings that just live in a glass of water, yet I have never seen this happen before. Or maybe I just never noticed it before, but this is probably now one of my larger houseplants, so maybe it's just more noticeable, especially when I've always gotten houseplants when they were smaller. I do have plans to repot this one and remove the soil it came in and use my own houseplant soil that I have had good luck with. 
I also like to pot my plants up in clear containers and use a decorative pot over them, but the clear containers helps me see just how wet the soil is to ensure that I don't overwater my plants. So lesson learned, but who knew that this pink princess would be such a princess? But at the end of the day, at least I guess it means my plant knows how to take care of itself, but I would still rather not have sap all over my house. So after I water it, I'll be more conscious that this is something that can happen and be on the lookout for it. But now I know. So there's cutation in a nutshell, and if you have ever wondered why this happens to some of your plants, now the mystery is solved.